Hi, hello, welcome back to another it's function. It's real stuff. Hi, hello, welcome back to another function. This is Krish Bhavna and I am so unprepared. So get ready to see the app that we have made for 11 weeks. Am I right bro? Yeah, I'm loving it. 11 weeks, so many crazy stories, so many fun memories and a lot of fun. Let's get started. This semester, in our software engineering class, we had two main projects. The first is the documentation project, where we created our own app idea and made the documentation for it. But the second project is what we want to talk about today, the coding project. Now I think it's the high time to show you all the coding project which we have been working on. So the coding project which we have been working on is called the Home Foods Delivery. Home Food Delivery is an app similar to Uber Eats or DoorDash, but instead of a customer placing an order to a restaurant and then having that restaurant's food be delivered to you, you can place your order to a home kitchen to where someone in their own kitchen will make home food and have that delivered to you. So now for the application, we have three different users, one the customer, two the cook, and three the driver. And now let's talk about the functionalities for these three different users. For the customer, we have the ability to search for cooks um, across um, a nearby radius and they can look through Google Maps and see what customers are, or what cooks are nearby and available to purchase from. And then once they select a cook and uh, they can order from their menu and place an order and add it to their cart. And after it's added to the cart, it will be transferred to the cook. So now the cook has the ability to um, see a list of all of the customers that um, have placed an order at their restaurant and now they can fulfill that requirement and uh, say, okay, customer, your order is ready. So now coming to the driver, they can now uh, see the weather API so they can see how the weather is outside. They have the ability to see the Google Maps API and they have a on and off toggle status for when they're ready to take orders and when they're not. So this is a mobile application which we have developed using Dart coding language and the framework which we have used is Flutter. So the reason we have used Flutter is because it's a cross-platform functioning language. Uh, we can deploy the same app on both Android and iOS and it can also be done on the web applications. And coming to even more details, uh, the database is currently hosted on AWS and the database that we chose to use is MySQL. So for the database, we decided to use MySQL hosting on an AWS server. The reason we wanted to use MySQL is because we knew that all the data coming in was supposed to be structured. For example, we had it structured in an orders table, in a customer table, so on and so forth. And the reason we use AWS is because we wanted anyone that was testing the app or trying to use the app to be able to access it anywhere for testing purposes. So if we didn't use it, we would have to host it on someone's local computer and that would have been more difficult for any one of us to try and test or use the app. As you now know, we have used Dart coding language as well as the Flutter framework for this mobile app. We chose this because it is cross-platform functional, meaning that it will work on Android devices, iOS devices, and even web devices. However, we chose not to build the web portion of it for this release. In the future, if we want to rebuild the app, we would choose Kotlin framework with Java as well as Object C and Swift for iOS. Now coming to the code, we have maintained one class for every one page seen on the screen. So in every page, we had multiple widgets. So to make ourselves better, one of the best choices we made was to write two different types of methods. One method was purely focused on the logical aspect and the other method was purely focused on the widget. So one of the things that we would like to change in future is, right now we have used build method as our main uh, method because it's the one which overwrites on every page. So instead of doing that, probably in future for every single widget or for every single text box, we'll probably maintain a different method and call it inside the build. So that in future, if you ever want to change just one line, we just don't have to go into build and we can directly change that single method. But we really like how we have used uh, two different types of methods because it never caused any confusion while we are working on the code. We try to minimize the number of lines written by using repetitive code and methods. And instead of repeating this code over and over again, we just use, we just call those methods. An example of this is the MySQL function where we kept calling from the database and get grabbing info to populate the screen. We also, of course, use proper inline coding for better uh, programming stuff. So one of the other best choices we have taken uh, during this project was to create as a template in the very beginning stages. So in the first week of the project journey, we created a template. 
where we sent all the folders in so all the customer and all the cook and all the driver each thing went into each folder so that was a really good idea for us and even the common tools we made sure it was in a different page so it was easier for us to just go access it so even in the future if you ever want to have any path directions going in any direction we know where to point it so that was one of the very good decisions that we have taken so in this journey we have learned about many things session activity and we have also done some crazy stuff with shared preferences because all the data that we get we can't keep on fetching a database every single time so we have used shared preferences to share the data between each file and we have also learned about mysql libraries and how they are really useful and our, the mysql library that we have used was only used for the mobile devices not for the web so we have learned many things in this journey but one of the best things that i'm proud about is me and my team were able to learn the basics of flutter and the basics of dart in just one week so while we were trying to set up the template itself we were able to learn the entire the basics of how everything works and from from that process everybody was able to quickly learn and uh, i'm really happy that we never had any pauses in between because when we first took this as a challenge we really wanted to write good code and we really wanted to develop a really nice project at the end of the day it should be on our mobile devices that was our dream and finally we were able to achieve it so that's the code part now let's see what apis we have used and how they are coming out so for this project, we decided to implement two different APIs, the Open Weather API and the Google Maps API. For the Google Maps API, we implemented it so that every restaurant is a marker on the map. And when you click on the marker, you're able to see the restaurant's name. And when you click on their name, you're able to go to the menu and order normally. And then the other API we implemented was the Weather Open Weather API. Um, so only the drivers are able to access this implementation and they can check their current weather at their current location, but they can also check um, the weather at other locations as well. As you've now heard about the app, let's talk about the journey behind it. So we used the Scrum methodology to complete this project. This Scrum methodology consisted of three releases and 11 sprints. Each sprint was one week long. The first release was mostly about functionality of the app. The second release, we talked about functionality as well as API integration. And the third release was about UI and testing and inspection. Now talking about the tools that we have used for this project. So our primary tool was Jira. We have used Jira to track our progress and to track our stories, each task which was uh, assigned to each other. So primarily what we have done is, in the beginning of each release, we used to plan what we want to do for that release. For example, if we have a release four weeks away from now, we used to plan everything and we used to write down the entire scenario talking about what we want to do for this release. So based on the scenario what we have written, we used to develop a product backlog which was good enough for the entire four weeks that we had. So based on that, we used to do a weekly meetings and in each weekly meeting, we used to decide what stories we have to move to the sprint. So that's the process that we have followed. Because of that, we were able to complete tasks faster and we know what our vision was and what our goals were for the end of four weeks. That way we were able to complete most of our tasks very quickly in the beginning of the week of each sprint and we had enough time to test our code and we also have done code reviews. And the second tool which we have used was GitHub. So GitHub was our main place where we had all our repository. Uh, in the repository, uh, we have had two branches. One was a development branch and one was the master branch. So in the development branch, we used to do all the coding. And once each person is done with their task, they used to ask someone in the team to do a code review. So someone in the team used to have a chance to do the white box inspection where they can inspect others code. And that also worked out really well because we were able to rectify all the issues in the beginning in the process. So our goal for Home Foods uh, in terms of UI was to make it clear, not cluttered, and completely intuitive for users to use. So we broke it up into three main um, components, the customer, the cook, and the driver. Each of these um, users will have their own UI, and you can tell because it's differentiated based on their color and color scheme. So now opening off with this is our home screen and this is how our login screen is going to look and we also have a sign up screen where people can sign up. So starting off with uh, everything here is perfectly validated like for example you cannot go without entering your username so you really do need to enter your username and password. So that's how the login screen is going to look. Now I'm going to show you how the customer page is going to look. So right now we are in the customer mode this is the customer page. 
let's say if you search for it uh, one of the things that we need to implement in the future is to actual search button but for right now it's going to show you all the places which are available so let's go to soham sodas so in soham sodas uh, if you can see there are multiple items up here um, you can add items so you can say crush with whipped cream seven up with whipped cream and all let's say you decided not to take diet pepsi so you can just remove it you can add it you can remove it you can change the quantity and all so now you can add to cart once it is added to cart you have came here and you have decided to remove the crush just you can delete the item and then happy belly coke you thought these are too many so you can just remove one and once it is done you have to come here so you can see the delivery date is set to 29th which is today and uh, delivery time you can change it to whatever time you want uh, but it has to be one hour from now because it's going to take at least one hour for the chefs and the driver to pick up and you can also add like special requests and for now i'm going to say none um, and then let's place the order so yeah if you can see the order is being placed right now and the order is placed so now i am so home soda so let's see how things look on the cook side so i'm right currently logged in as a customer that's the default if i hit the hamburger menu or drawer i can hit on cook if you're not a cook this will take you to a cook sign up page where you enter info information and you'll be automatically enrolled as a cook however since i'm already enrolled i'm taken to this screen automatically so you can see my current menu this is all the stuff that krish ordered and was looking at and here's his order. If I have no orders, it would say no current orders, but since I have an order, I can click on it and it'll show me Krish Bhavna as the person who ordered it. Uh, the special instructions, he put none, so you can see none, and you can see everything that he ordered with the quantity. So now it's my turn to go make the food and get it ready. The second I do that, when I'm ready, I'll hit complete order. Now it's gone from my current orders list view. This means that now it's time for the driver to pick it up and it's off my hands at this point. So now let's say if I want to edit my menu and add something, I can do it by hitting this add menu bu item button right here. So let's do 7up cake. And I can add a description, so I'll say with frosting. And we'll put a price, let's put it at, at $4.99. And I hit add item. I hit the refresh button, top item is a 7-Up cake. So now you are able to see how the cook side has worked. Now let's do the same thing but let's take a different approach this time. Let's go and use the maps function we have. So using the maps also you can place the item order. So for example we have Isha's Indian food, uh, the other teammates. So we can go to his page and uh, we can add items and we can do everything which is related to it. It's going to take you to the same exact page. So this way, if user is trying to find a place which is closer to him in the map location, then we can do it. And the other feature is, you have, let's say you have decided to do this and let's say you have not interested anymore, you can just clear the items and it's going to be gone. Okay, so let me show you the driver page. So as you can see first, the cook has an orange color scheme. Versus if I go to driver, is a more of a blue color scheme. One of our teammates uh, did this intentionally to distinguish different roles. So we did so by changing the color in the UI. So here's how the driver functionality works. At the moment, I'm set off as off so that I can't see any current orders. But if I'm ready to pick up some current orders, I'll hit the on button. And I can see all the current orders that I need to pick up. So moving on, right? it'll show me my current location and all the different functionalities of the map just as shown before with the customer side um, not, no new functionalities added at the moment you, we have a profile page where you can change any information if needed this is specific to driver so see the only things you can change is your con your contact number and your VIN number uh, VIN for your car and now a big functionality of driver is the open weather API that was also mentioned earlier so right now I'm in Chicago and the weather is 63 degrees outside with a low of 55 and a high of 69. We can see that. That is the current weather for now. If I were to change the city and I change this to Niles, it's a close by suburb. So it's 62 degrees in Niles right now with the same high and low on today, Friday. But let's say I just want to know the weather for my current city. I'm going to hit this arrow button right here. 
and it changed it right back to Chicago. So if I go back to driver, and here we have a current gas price template. Uh, we had issues trying to implement our gas price API due to pricing reasons and availability. However, in the future, this is one functionality we would love to add if possible. So last but not the least, we also have profile pages. Uh, so the profile pages are very unique from cook, driver, and customer. So if you can look here, the current profile page is very unique. Uh, so that's the app so far and uh, I'm really happy we got a chance to show you the demo. Now let's get back and continue into the video. If you have been clearly, let's start it here. Few weeks ago, uh, me and my team were presenting something called Booska Fitness where we were talking about health, we were talking about fitness and then we wanted to do something similar, actually that's a joke. But uh, we really wanted to do this home foods delivery app which is focused on the health aspect again. So here we are back with the home foods delivery app. This is Krish Bhavna, Ish Soham and Hari. So in terms of food that we use for the countries, we decided to use Dart with the Flutter framework because when you build with Dart, you're actually able to keep one code base and build two different apps from it. So with Dart, I can build the Android version and the iOS version of the app all at once without keeping two different code bases. For the database, we decided to use MySQL, those on Amazon AWS. And in terms of API, we decided to use Google Maps and the Open Weather API. So that's the end of the video. Thank you so much, guys. And before we leave, I just want to introduce my team to you all. This is Ish Swami, the very famous database expert. Uh, this is Hari Sinam, the UI expert. And that is Mr. Song Patel, the everything expert. And this is me, the fake scrum master and everything else about this team. So I really hope you all like this video. And guys, remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. And don't forget to comment hashtag Rotosandk. This is Krish Bhavna signing off. Until then, this is my team. See you all once again next week. Have a nice day.